High five, high five, sister. Let's go, sisters. Finish strong, finish strong, finish strong. Let's finish strong, y'all. Finish strong, finish strong, finish strong. Let's go. Let's finish strong, y'all. Finish strong, finish strong, finish strong, finish strong. Let's go, sis. Finish strong, finish strong. I'm a little shy, in case you noticed. Yeah. All right, everybody, let's get our energy up. I have a request. If you have an empty seat next to you, please join your sister or your sibling, you know, brother. Join someone else, OK? Who here is feeling more empowered today than they did yesterday? Say, I am. I am. Who's walking away from this conference ready to take action in a way that they were never able to take before. Say, I am. I am. Excellent. Now I want you to look to the right, to your sibling, and say, I got your back. I got your back. Now I want you to turn the other direction and look, your, look at your sibling in the eye and say, I got your back. I got your back. Awesome. All right, everybody, last request. I'd like you to stand up. I'd like you to scoot your chair in. I want you to stand up. If you cannot stand up for whatever reason, medically, physically, that's OK. But I just, I just want to give you that choice. I want you to scoot your chairs in and give yourselves a little bit of a space. I'm going to give you the quickest self-defense lesson you have ever been given. And it, it could potentially save your life. OK? So here's what we're going to do. We are going to separate our legs 24 inches, both, both toes pointing forward. And in a minute, I want you to get used to dropping it like it's hot. Hey. All right? And I, when I say drop it like it's hot, I mean, hey, drop it like it's hot. Don't do any of this like constipated stuff. I really want you to pretend you're peeing on a bucket or something, and I need you to drop it like it's hot. Hey. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Awesome. OK, now, next request. I want you to turn to your partner and say, do I have your permission to grab you by the wrist? <laughs> so if your partner says yes, I want, I want the person on this side to grab your partner's wrist. So if you're facing this way, if you're facing the stage, I need you to hold your partner by the wrist, by your left hand. How we doing? How we doing? We good? We good back there? Yeah, don't mix it up, girl. Left, right here. All right, cool. So, so all I want you to do, uh, person over here, is I want you to tug and pull your partner a little bit. And in a second, when that happens, I want the person on the receiving end to drop it like it's hot. Ready? This side. Pull your partner. Now drop it like it's hot. Just stay there. Just stay there. That's all you got to do. Just stay there. Yeah. I love how committed this team is because some of y'all are down here. You don't need to be down there. It really is as simple as just dropping your hips, rooting yourself. Rooting yourself in love and courage, like your legs are the trunks of a tree, it all re just requires this, that's it, okay? Now switch, other side. I want the person on this side grabbing this person with their right hand. You're grabbing the person's wrist with your right hand, okay? Partner, start pulling your partner. And other person, drop it like it's hot. Does it, how do you feel? You're not moving. You're not going anywhere. All right. Thanks, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yep, yep, yep. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. Now, who's, who's with me? I just need your attention again. Who's with me? Say, I am. I am. Excellent. People don't remember what you say. They remember how you made them feel. So today, my intention is to make you feel a lot of things. But really, what I just gave you was a technique that could save your life. You don't know me. I haven't earned your trust yet.
My name is Leslie Liu. I'm a second generation Korean and Chinese and Filipino American. I've been a martial artist for 20 years. I have two black belts. I am the owner and founder of Reclaiming Your Courage. And I help marginalized communities tap into their inner strength, reclaim their voice, and embody their boundaries. And I do that through a holistic approach to self-defense. And we're going to talk more about that today. My values are love, courage, and community. And my mission is to save the lives of women and allies globally. So again, for the men that are in the room today, I really want to acknowledge you and thank you for being here with us and staying here with us. But I also want to remind you that women do not need saviors. They need allies, OK? And why do I serve marginalized communities? And what are marginalized communities? Marginalized communities are BIPOC, black, indigenous, people of color. If you identify with Latinx, queer, neurodivergent, disabled, nobody gets left behind. And I feel very strongly about that because you can be a cis white male and walk into any MMA gym and it's all good for you. You have access, but it's not that simple. Anyone here ever take a self-defense class before? Yeah. All right. What are some things we think about when we think about self-defense? Kick ass. Kick ass. Anything else? Dramatic. Like, hi -ah! Yeah! Ha! Yes. yes, it looks cool, right? Anything else? <laughs> what do you... Probably it's probably going to hurt. What have you been told about how to defend yourself? Be reactive? Okay, in what way? How does this manifest? So if someone is attacking you, how does you react to that? Okay, so how should you react? Okay, but how should you react? With violence. With violence, interesting. Okay, anyone else have a perspective? I like that because you're saying uh, follow your gut because yep. if something's going off, you should follow it. I'm going to challenge a couple of those viewpoints because my whole perspective is that we actually have to evolve the way that we protect ourselves. So I am most passionate about if we are, if we are talking about creating empowerment for women in economies, we need to start talking about physical safety personal safety, psychological safety. You had so many brilliant women here talking about financial security. But in my world, people use money, technology, and other forms of abuse to control women. Okay? So thank you for saying that. But what I really want to challenge is the traditional things that you have been told, which is yell. Well, uh, the average amount of an attack lasts about 12 to 18 minutes. So you have the potential to lose your voice. So I tell my clients not to yell. We use something called the she's birdie alarm to preserve your voice. And I teach you how to attack with a tactical flashlight to blind your opponent so you can get out of the situation safely home to your loved ones. And then the other thing that I was going to challenge um, that you said is follow that gut. And what I want to, you know, I'm a trauma-informed self-defense coach, so that means understanding the role that complex trauma has on our nervous systems, okay? So earlier, Anna was saying um, about fight, flight, fawn. Sorry, I'm tired. I can't do um, riddle, you know, F, 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 F. People come to me all the time and say, I don't know if I would fight, flight, fawn, or freeze. And it's okay because just know that biologically your body is meant to shut down. Your nervous system is going to shut down in the event of a threat and a trauma response. And I'm here to tell you, you are not inadequate. Okay? So this is about empowerment through self-defense, but challenging what it means to be self-defense. I 
see this stuff all the time. You hit the man in the suit, you poke him in the eyes, people tell you to like hold pepper spray, kick somebody in the balls. Don't kick someone in the balls. I've got two black belts. Do you realize how many reps you actually have to put in to be really accurate to kick someone in the nuts? That's a reality. What do you do when you use your pepper spray and it doesn't work? That's where I come in. Because you need to have a strategy and a framework around how to protect yourself. But physical self-defense is not all that there is. It's not. It's about self-advocacy. It's about self-love. It's about your ability to really stand in your power is what I'm wanting to talk about. I don't want you fixating on the stuff. That ish don't work. Stop carrying the cat keychain. Stop telling people to run. It's ableist. I work with communities where elders are attacked. I'm not going to tell my 85-year-old grandma to run. OK? Maybe, maybe your friend got out of the hospital. Maybe your friend has asthma. We have to start thinking about the ways that we're actually gaslighting people. We're not helping them. We actually have to equip people with the skill set. Oops. Oops. <laughs> By definition, self-defense is your ability to take up space and manage the space around you. So. If you are someone who's not used to taking up space, what does that mean, right? People tell me, self-defense is loud and it's aggressive. It doesn't have to be. It's violent. No, it, it actually doesn't have to be. And we're going to talk more about that. And to manage the space around you, vocalizing boundaries is an act of self-defense. That's managing your space. It's energetically protecting yourself. All you beautiful people have been telling me, gosh, I love your energy. Thank you. My, my energy is infinite because my love is infinite and because I protect my peace. So my goal is to help you protect your peace. And holistic self-defense requires to you to build a mindset that you're worth fighting for, you are not alone, and you are worth defending. If you don't increase your self-worth, none of this shit matters. The pepper spray, all of that stuff. If you don't let someone know that they need to take a step back, they're not going to honor your boundaries. You know, I see it all the time. People come to me and they're like, I don't really want, I mean, I don't know why people aren't listening to my boundaries. Well, the mistake is there's probably misalignment between what you are saying and what your body is doing. I just really want you to, um, you know, that, is, it, is it okay if you move away from me? Are you going to honor someone's boundary if they're going to be positioning themselves in that way? No. You're more likely to say, you're too close for comfort, take two steps back. Do you see the difference there? It's clear, it's concise. Was that aggressive? No. Exactly. So this is, this is why I want us to shift the narrative. Let me tell you a little bit about myself uh, in a kind of time portal-ish kind of way. Um, I grew up as an Asian American, right? My mama's Korean, so you can't, you can't break me. You can only bend me because I was raised by a Korean mama. My mom decided when I was eight years old that it was a fantastic idea to send me on a plane to Korea so I could get in tune with my culture. <laughs> I don't speak the language, nothing. She flies me over there one summer, and I get sexually assaulted in a vehicle by a family friend. A family friend that knew I didn't speak the language. And that's not uncommon. Let's think about the problem here. As women, we don't wake up every day and think, I got to learn self-defense or I, I, I'm going to get raped today, right? But that's our reality. There are several attacks 
and wars that we have to face every day. Statistically, one in five of us in this room, women, will be sexually assaulted in our lifetime. So think about that. That means that's you, that's you potentially, that's you, that's you. That's a huge number, and those statistics are pre-COVID, okay? Uh, there is, even if you're not concerned about the physical, there's you know, microaggressions in the work, workplace, your ability to advocate for your pay, all of those things. So getting back to the story is that I was sexually assaulted because I grew up with a culture of suppression. Don't make waves. Don't bring shame to the family. Trauma Olympics. I just felt like my mom was going to try to compete with me and say, yeah, but I've been through worse. That's, that's how I was conditioned. So that was my first lesson in suppressing and not speaking up. Fast forward to the first time I ever got mugged on the streets with a gun pointed to my head with my back along a cold concrete wall. I froze and I just surrendered because like, I'm, I'm just going to accept the fact that I'm going to die. But that's okay because that was the first time and I froze. There's nothing wrong with you. You are not inadequate. Fast forward to my big corporate job. I work for a lady that reminds me of Mer Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Hermes. <laughs> Seriously, she put her Hermes bag on my table every day. And she sold me on the idea that she was a mentor to me. What I didn't know is that my people-pleasing tendencies as an assistant meant she got to talk to me like a dog. I basically just went wherever she went, gave her her jacket, and went to eat with her with her clients. It was horrible. And so one day, she sat me down at the table because she was very upset with something I did because I didn't do it the way that she would have done it. It was like something stupid, like organizing a folder. She sat me down, got her red pen, and she drew a bell curve. And she said, Leslie, some people are just up here. But I think you're down here and you're kind of stupid, right? Did you think that I said something? No, because I was always taught to be a good Asian girl, to bite my tongue, to be excellent at everything, student body president, trials for the Olympic Taekwondo team. You have to be the best at everything, Leslie, but don't embarrass us. So what did I do? I bit my tongue and I learned about the cost of suppression and not speaking up. A couple of months after that moment, a doctor sat me down after I'd been into the hospital many times with stomach pains. And she sat me down and she said, you have an ulcer. I was like, uh-huh. And if you don't learn how to cope with your stress in a healthy way, you're going to bleed out. It's like, you can't give me a pill for that or anything? They're like, no, you actually have to learn how to communicate and express yourself. And that was my next lesson in having to learn how to craft, craft my voice and get really good at expressing boundaries towards people that basically were just beating me up and kicking me in the stomach all the time. Fast forward, I'm in a typical dojo, a McDojo in a strip mall. I'm teaching self-defense in the traditional way, the stuff. Yeah, I want to learn how to kick someone's ass. Yeah, all that cool stuff. And you know what I started noticing? Is that there were always a handful of women in the class who were stuck. And everybody else was hardcore. And then what they would do is they'd, they'd look at the person and they'd roll their eyes. Just do the move. Just do the move. So um, I'm going to have a volunteer come up. And I want to show you the difference between traditional self-defense and actually standing in your power. Heather, can you come up as well? I want you to just hold this on the side. Just bend your front leg and hold, just hold it straight out like this. You don't have to lock your arms. So in a second, 
Uh, you're going to bring your right foot back. So traditional self-defense, you go to the class, and it's usually a man who was in the military, wrote a book with his wife or something like that, okay? <laughs> he will say, here's the technique, do the move. So this is what tra traditional self-defense lo looks like. Clara, with your palm, I just want you to break the board, break the board. Break the board! <laughs> okay. Yell at me! <laughs> exactly, exactly. How did that feel? Scary. I was, it was like intense, I was rushed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna um, do something different, okay? I just want you to close your eyes, Clara. Okay, just relax your body. Let's take a couple of three deep breaths, deep breaths, okay? Thank you. And on each exhalation, I want you to feel your heels planted into the floor. And I want you to root yourself in love and courage. And your feet are actually the branches of a huge oak tree. Okay? And now, I want you to picture the person that you love and you are trying to get back home safely to. I want you to think about that girl that had to surrender, the, the workaholic, before she found clarity. And you are the embodiment of the new you trying to break through to get to Nicholas, to get to that other version of Clara that didn't have clarity. Now in a second, when you're ready, I want you to open your eyes. Okay? Now I want you to bend your front leg, okay? And I want you to visualize Nicholas behind this board. I want you to visualize Clara before she had clarity. Take a deep breath. And what you're going to want to do is instead of cocking yourself back, I want you to go through the boards. I want you to break through the boards to get to Nicholas and to that version of Clara. Okay? I'm going to count to three. And when you are ready, take a deep breath and get to the other side of that board. You are not alone. You are worth fighting for. Three, two, one. Great job. Can you tell us really quick, Clara, what was different about that second time? You know, I think it's that visualization. It's that mindset of feeling strong on the inside. You know, when you first came at me, it was like, just do it, just do it, just do it. Now I know why I was doing it. And I felt in control. Thank you so much. Thank you. you hold that. How did that look and feel for the second time for all of you watching? What was different? This powerful energy. Anyone else notice anything different? What, what resonated for you when you were watching that? Motivation. Motivation. Focus. 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 <laughs> exactly. So what I leave you here with today is here's the difference. I, am, I was sick of everyone yelling at the people in the class because someone who's been a sexual assault survivor like myself, I'm like, why are you yelling at me? So I started going towards people, asking them, how do you identify? How does that intersect with the way that potential attackers perceive you? Whose voice are you hearing right now? Creating a safe space for people before getting into the technique and the stuff. I can teach you the technique and stuff. And so, really briefly, before I go, may I have my volunteer, my male ally, come up here? Please come here, please come here. If you can just face the crowd here. Remember what I showed you earlier? I want to talk about um, four phases of an attack really quick. This is the psychology of your attacker. Identify an unsuspecting target. Second, isolate and subdue. Number three, exhaust. Number four, carry out the assault. That's the psychology of your attacker. 
So it will always start with pulling of the hair, pulling by the wrist. So when my attacker grabs me by the wrist and tries to pull me in the car, what am I going to do? Drop it like it's hot. Go ahead and try to pull me with all your strength. Pull her, pull her. Yes, yes, yes. So let's, yeah, keep going, keep going. I could be here all day, but it's not by force. It's leverage over strength. So women, you have hips. Go into the earth. Okay, he's strong, but I'm not pulling myself. I'm not hurting myself. I could stay here all day. He will probably be sweating by the, by the end of this. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. You can take a seat. All right. Who's feeling more empowered than they were yesterday? Say, I am. Who here is planning an event in the next 12 months with a group of women? Who here feels like this experience was transformative for them? Then I need to talk to you because that's what I do and that's what's in my heart is I create empowerment experiences that are world class and help women with the deep inner knowing that they can stand in their power. So come find me and come see me at that table and we need to talk about your event. Oh, questions? Sorry. Yes. Thank you. This will be the only question I take because I talk a lot uh, and I talk a lot with my hands, so I must be Italian. Her question was, at what point did I know I needed self-defense? Great question. My mom forced me to um, take Taekwondo when I, before that trip to Korea. Why? Because um, I was sitting at the bus stop and I would get bullied every day. I had uh, the blonde girl spit in my face say that I was fat and I would never be loved. And they fucking broke my Sony Walkman and threw it on the ground and crushed it. So that was happening to me and I was crying every day. And one day my mom pulled me aside and she's like, what's going on? And I told her and she's like, I'm signing you up for Taekwondo camp. I have, I have no consent. She made me go, I hated it. But she said, you're gonna learn how to kick the shit out of those girls. And that's ultimately what happened a year after she signed me up for Taekwondo camp. So thank you very much.